I have been using motorised sliders for many years. One of my go-to sliders was made by Canova. Now this is the P1. If you do have one of the earlier P1s that was cable connected, you can upgrade that by changing the motor module. Fitting the new module to the old P1 is very easy to do and it does give you the advantage of not having any trailing wires and the slider can be operated remotely. The Canova P1 comes in different sizes, 60, 80, 100 and 120 centimetres in length. What I'm looking at today is upgrading from the old cable remote controller to the S3 remote controller module. I will leave a link in the description below for this upgrade kit for this slider. Everything you need to do the upgrade can be found in the handy carrying case. This comprises of the shutter release, allen keys and set pins, new belt, a USB lead, a motor module and a quick guide on how to fit the module. The user manual or quick guide is very simple and easy to use. It gives you all the QR codes you need for the app. This can be for both iOS and Android. Because the kit is made for the P1 and K slider, you may find some bits and pieces in there that you do not need. Although your P1 slider has already got a belt fitted from the last time when you first bought it, they do provide you with another belt. First job we need to do is to slacken and remove one end of the belt from the slider as shown. If your belt is in good condition there would be no need to change it for one of the new belts. When the one end is free feed it away from the pulley unit on the old motor. Undo the two screws which hold the motor in place at this time. These are the red knobs that you need to undo anti-clockwise until the motor is freed. That's it, it's as simple as that. The old motor has now been removed. You can store this in the case that they provided you with the new motor in. The KMS S3 motor module is made up of a mixture of high impact ABS plastic and alloy. All the electronics are in the main plastic box section. This houses the shutter release port, the power input, the LED indicator and power button. The battery mount is for Sony NP750s or 970s, they do not provide you with these, you will need to provide your own. In the alloy section can be found the bearing and belt pulleys. The mounting holes are on the top to connect to the main slider unit. Fitting the motor unit to the main slider platform is extremely easy. While the motor is removed, simply check and make sure there's free movement of the platform backwards and forwards before fitting the new motor. Personally, I found putting the small set pins into the motor module first, then offer it up to the main slider platform. Using the anti-movement screw on the back of the platform, tighten that so the platform doesn't move while you're fitting the new motor. The holes on the platform and also on the motor module will line up. Using the allen keys provided, simply rotate in a clockwise direction until tight each of the set pins. The set pins do need to be tight, do not over tighten them. Remember, these are screwed into alloy. That concludes the fitment of the motor module. Next is our belt. It was nice to see that they give you double the amount of belt that you require. This is always handy if you make a mistake or in later times you need to replace the belt due to breakages. When fitting the belt, ensure that it stays flat, it gets no twists and manipulate it round each of the bearings and pulley. You will find that the belt will fit round the bearings and pulley with ease. Loosen the belt clamp sufficiently to enable the belt to be fed through the clamp. The teeth of the belt should be facing towards you as you're feeding it through the clamp. Before you put that final turn on the clamps, ensure that the belt tension is sufficient that you can flick the belt and it's not loose. Do not overstretch the belt, it doesn't need to be like a guitar string. If you do try to move the centre platform too quick, you will find there will be a resistance. This will give you a jerky feeling, don't worry, that is how it should be. That concludes the upgrade from the old control box with wire on to the motor to the new motor module that has got wireless facilities in it. 
Before you order your upgrade kit, let them know what camera you've got so they can send you the correct shutter release cable for your camera. If you don't let them know, they will send you the RCO2. I did drop a note to them saying I had the 70D and they sent me the appropriate lead for that. Personally, it's very rare that I do any time lapse, but it's nice to know that I do have a lead if I ever change my mind. There are a couple of methods that you can use to provide power. One is the Sony NP750 or 970 batteries, or a mains adapter rated at 5 volt at 2 amp. They do provide you with a short USB lead. No battery or mains adapter is provided, you will need to buy your own. Personally, I like to use the Sony batteries, it's more convenient and you don't have any wires hanging around. One thing to remember, you can move the platform slowly with the power off. With the power switch done, you are unable then to move the platform. If you do need to move the platform for any reason, make sure that you do it first before switching on the power switch. The QR code for both Android and iOS can be found in the manual. To control the slider, you will need to download this onto your mobile device. This is an APK installation file that is used. Simply follow the download instructions on the screen and install it. All the commands that are sent from your mobile device to the slider uses Bluetooth. With the motor module switched on, it will flash green on its LED. Press the Bluetooth searching on the app and you will see KMS slider appear. Select that. The motor module LED will turn red when paired and the app will go into the main screen. In a B set, we simply set the start and ending points and speed that you require. The video icon will give you the duration, that can be hours, minutes or seconds, loop mode, ramp, you can go from A to B or B to A and start and stop. The menu functions are A, B set, video, time lapse, 360 mode which we don't have because we don't have the module and manual mode. In time lapse you can set exposure, duration, interval, frames, frames per second and delay. There is a 360 module, we do not have that, so we're unable to use any of the 360 degree facilities in the app. And the final icon is manual. As the name suggests, you can use manual mode here. Remember, we don't have the 360 module, so we can only use on the left our control for the slider. Well, I think we've covered all the basics here, so we'll try and do a setup. Switch on your motor module, the LED will blink green while it's trying to register with the mobile device. You can change your language or your sizes, which could be inches or millimeters. Press on the Bluetooth searching, you will see KMS slider appear on the screen. Select that and that will take you directly into the menu mode. Using the left or right arrows, select your starting point. Once you have selected that, then you click on the OK button in the center. Try and avoid the temptation of grabbing the platform and moving it by hand. Just simply use the left and right arrows. Once the OK button has been pressed for the first time, the set A point will turn orange, indicating that that's set. Move the slider to the right and press the OK button when you're happy. Again, set B will indicate orange. In the bottom menu, select video. In this section, you can change the duration. Simply tap on either hours, minutes or seconds and change and scroll up to the desired amount of time that you require the action to take place. You can select loop or ramp. Ramp will slowly bring the camera into operation or loop will just continually go backwards and forwards, either A to B or B to A. When you're happy with all your settings, to start everything off, press the play button. This will also give you the opportunity to pause if required. That's it, it is as simple as that. The app is quite easy and user friendly. It enables me to continually loop Having the ramp is quite good, so you haven't got that stop fast and go quick syndrome that you get on some videos. And having the loop there, it'll just continually sit there all day, working backwards and forwards until you stop it. If you're not happy with the settings, you can change them easily by pressing the clear button and going through all the same procedure again. 
One thing to remember in manual mode, if you've set A and B, manual mode will only take you backwards and forwards to those set positions. So if you want to go further, you'll have to press the clear button and restart all over again, set in point A and point B, then manual mode will give you that full sweep that you've set. As you can see here, I've set A and B just to go a short distance. So keep them pressing to the left, it will stop at the point A and pressing and holding to the right, it will stop at point B. What I would suggest is simply familiarize yourself with the app. There's not a lot to learn. It is quite simple, easy, basic and quite logical the way they've done things. Well, that concludes the assembly and working out how the app works. Now it's time to put it through its paces. Now I know a lot of people just use these sliders flat but I was curious to know how much of an angle I could actually get this to operate and not cause any issues. The weight of the camera, the ball joint and quick release plate came to three pounds which is about 1.4 kilogram and at this angle it coped with it quite well. The horizontal payload for this is approximately £17, which is about 8kg. The diagonal payload is about £6.6 .6 or 3kg. And finally, the vertical payload should be £2.2 or 1kg. So we're just a little over doing what we're doing now at the moment, and it did seem to cope with it quite well. I think the specifications that they gave on the website was a little bit on the cautious side, so you can push it a bit. With this one I had no issues or problems at all. There is facility on the bottom with the quarter 20 or 3 8 holes to enable you to fit some quick release plates that you can use and put this onto a tripod. Remember it depending upon the type of camera and the weight of the camera you will get a seesaw effect if you just use the tripod in the center as you can see here. The tripod that I'm using here at the moment is not an expensive one and there is a little bit of movement on there but the better way is to use tripods one on either side. This would be the same as if you put it onto a bench, table or on the ground. One very important issue is how much noise does this slider make when in use? Using a sound level meter to take the readings with no motors or anything running except the fans on the computer, I was getting just over 47 dB. This was a simple test on its maximum speed with the ball joint and quick release plate fitted. To add a bit more load I've added the camera now so the total extra weight should be £3 or 1.4 kilogram. I must admit I have had other sliders in the past and none of them, and I mean none of them, have been as quiet as this one. Just for test purposes I thought I'd pop out into the garden, couple of tripods, stick the slider on the top and let it do its thing. I set the slider up so it would do a panoramic view with the camera. There was a little bit of wind out there that day when I did the filming so I apologise for any of the wind noises. This time I set the camera up to do a parallax style shot. Again we got wind in the back and noisy crows in the background, apologies for that. That went off with no issues or problems, nice steady shots. 
just as a point of interest I've decided to take a walk down to the bottom of the garden now this is approximately 70 feet away from the camera and slider and I can still operate using the mobile device to start and stop the camera okay I've just stopped the camera at this point and now starting it up again it's quite interesting to see the distance that you can get with Bluetooth. It'll be the same as any other Bluetooth device range-wise. As long as there's nothing in between the mobile device and the slider, you will get some quite good distances. Using the tripods in this manner makes life a lot easier, especially with this diagonal shot. With regards to motor noises from the motor on the slider, Obviously you'll not hear them here, there's that much noise, wind, birds and car noises, you'll not hear it. But inside the studio it is extremely good as you've seen with the audio tests that we did earlier on. As regards sliders, I must say I am very impressed with this particular slider. If you are in the market for a slider that is wireless, this is well worth considering. I hope you found this information of use to you. Thank you for watching.